Lightning was something that early humans and other creatures always contended with. Learning about the electrical nature of lightning occurred with Benjamin Franklin in the 18th century. As a means of carrying energy from one place to another, electricity has revolutionized transport, heating, lighting, computation, and communications. Electricity is the backbone of modern industrial society. Electricity deals mainly with the invisible realm of the tiny, not as easy to visualize as material we've studied before. So, how do we go about learning electricity? I think the best way is to tie it to ideas and concepts we've studied before. We'll use analogies, starting with gravity. We've learned that gravity involves gravitational forces between objects with mass. In a similar way, electricity involves electric forces between objects with electric charge. Here we see a gravitational force on a satellite orbiting a planet. And we see an electric force on an electron orbiting a proton in a hydrogen atom. Recall in our study of atoms that subatomic particles such as protons and electrons are electrically charged. The electron is negatively charged and the proton is positively charged. Electricity includes a wide variety of well-known effects, such as lightning, static electricity, current electricity, electromagnetic induction, and extends to the creation of electromagnetic radiation such as radio waves and light waves. We'll first learn about static electricity, with gravity as a starting point. The equation for gravitational force, first formulated by Isaac Newton, is analogous to the equation for electric force, formulated by Charles Coulomb a century or so after the time of Newton. The Qs stand for quantities of charge, and we use R for radial distance, the straight line distance between masses and charges. I show you these two equations mainly to show how gravity and electricity are similar. The details of the equation for electric force between charges, Coulomb's law, we'll treat in the next lesson, not now. Do you want to learn all this? Suppose you say you'll never become an electrician or a technician, that you don't expect to make practical use of this knowledge. Here's what's important. Whether or not you ever use this knowledge, in the act of learning how concepts connect to one another, you're establishing a wiring in your brain that didn't exist before. It's the wiring in your brain that makes you an educated person. That wiring will be useful in areas you can't dream of right now. So let's continue. We'll learn later about the electric field and see it's analogous to the gravitational field. Just as a gravitational field surrounds an object with mass, an electric field surrounds an object with electric charge. Then we'll learn features of electricity that are analogous to fluids. Voltage is an electric pressure analogous to fluid pressure. Electric current is analogous to fluid flow in pipes. And electric potential energy is analogous to gravitational potential energy. We'll see that our lessons on electricity nicely tie to concepts we've covered before. I hope I can say concepts we've learned before. We'll take it slow and see. There are new terms to learn. Voltage, measured in volts, relates to electric pressure. Differences in voltage account for the flow of electric charge, current, which is measured in amperes. Both electric and gravitational potential energy are expressed in units familiar to us, joules. Electricity may be entirely new to you, but with a bit of effort can become a field of study you'll be comfortable with. Let's work toward that. I want to leave you with a question. Why do I think it's a good idea to discuss gravity and fluid flow when learning about electricity? Think about that. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.